All right. Hello. This is Friday Live, the week five of six, all about self awareness. I have this really cool Prana Power shirt on from my dear friend. Um, I'll post her up in here so that you can see um, her tag, um, where she, where to find her. That's what I mean. <laughs> um, so today is all about showing up for yourself. And I'm here. I showed up and, you know, you get to show up as well. I'm showing up also for myself as well as for you um, in that way because my intention is to um, do this for myself and be able to teach and share what I have learned throughout 10 years of practicing self-awareness and practicing meditation and yoga and also I'm showing up for you to help to share this. So it's sort of a both and. It's showing up for you and it's showing up for me. I'm really excited for today. So I'm just gonna breathe a little bit, calm down, get into my body, start to uh, feel into that heart space. You can do this too. Just taking deep rounds of breath in through the nose breathe it out that's what this shirt reminds me to do prana is all about our life force our breath that breath that we could not live without that breath that uh, guides us and takes us through our days so anytime you're starting to feel flustered or you're starting to feel like uh out of control or things are a little bit um wonky you just use the breath have your prana and take a deep breath in and breathe it out the mouth. I love that one. So today's not all about breath. It's about showing up for yourself. So this strategy of self-awareness is something that is similar to week one that we talked about of building trust with yourself. When you start to feel that self-doubt coming in, you start to get into your um, for this frame of mind of how do you connect with yourself? How do you maintain um, trust so that you can meet your own needs? So it's similar to meeting your needs, but it's sort of this advanced theory. It's an, an advanced way that you're showing up for yourself. Um, and in today's talk, I, it might seem like uh, I'm a little harsh or that I'm giving some tough love because I'm, it might strike a chord or I might get into some nerves that you didn't know were there or it might trigger things that you weren't ready to really be triggered, but I'm triggering things so that you can become more aware of, that they are there. So stay with me. You got this. I got you. All is well. All is well. Um, so, you know, we've established and looked at self-doubt and now it's time to figure out how to show up for yourself. And this means that, um, maybe you've been wanting to do something, but you weren't sure how to start, or maybe you've had this big dream to run a marathon, but you didn't know where to go with it or even where to begin. And... Um, so you just maybe sat back and didn't even do it, but you continually talk about doing it or you have ideas and dreams to do it, but it's, it's not happening. So there's reasons that underlie um, the why. Why aren't you doing that? What's, what's really coming up for you that is preventing you from, from doing those things? And we'll get into that. But um, for now, just thinking about what are some things that you have wanted to do in your life? What are some goals or some dreams that you've had for yourself or even on a daily basis of things that you're like, oh yeah, I wanted to get to that. And then maybe you didn't get to that. What, what are those things? Are, are there goals of um, you know, showing up for yourself in a project or doing some work at home or Maybe it's something in your career that you've wanted to do and you haven't done. Uh, maybe it's a training to advance your um, understanding of your job, or it's um, a way to uh, show up for your family at home. 
Um, maybe there's something that you have wanted to do, but you just haven't been doing it. You haven't gotten to that point. And, you know, we, we have different excuses. We have different reasons why these happen, why, why they don't happen, actually, why it, why it happens that we just sit back and don't, don't do those things that we set out to do. Uh, sometimes it's about time. Sometimes it's about money. Sometimes it's about feeling um, less than or feeling like we don't have the cap capability or the capacity to really do those things. And um, no matter what it is, it's, it's okay. You know, the first step is just to be aware that that is happening, that something is coming up for you that's preventing you from showing up. From, from getting to that point that you really want to be of, I really want to run a marathon, but I'm not quite there. Or I really want to learn more um, to advance my career, but I'm just have no idea where to start or how to get that to that point. Um, you know, saying I don't know or you know, coming up with these reasons of why they're all similar to, you know, they're all generally avoidance. It's, it's an avoidance of something. You're avoiding it. And what are you avoiding? That's the biggest question. What are you avoiding? Are you avoiding running the marathon? Maybe. Or maybe you're avoiding the outcome of that marathon. What's going to happen after you run a marathon? You might not be the same person that you are today. Probably not. I mean, your body's going to change. You might lose some toenails. <laughs> I've never run a marathon, but I know plenty of friends who have run marathons and they lose their toenails. So maybe you're afraid of losing toenails and you're not admitting that to yourself. That's okay. Just be aware of it, right? Um, but beyond the toenails and beyond the physical body of how that's going to change, your, your whole body is, is going to change. Your being is going to change. Your heart is going to change. Your mentality is going to change. So you are going to be a different person when you meet that goal. You are going to be a different person when you show up in that way that you've been planning on showing up. So is there a reason that you're avoiding changing into that other person? So often we sit back and we get comfortable. We feel like we are so comfortable with this familiarity of who we are that even the idea of going forth with a goal that we set for ourselves that we know is going to ultimately better us isn't happening because we are comfortable. And sometimes we choose the comf comfortability and the familiarity over the unknown, over what might happen later. We don't know what it's going to be. We don't know who we will be at that point. But we don't know unless we try. And if we, you know, try and it turns into something that we don't really enjoy or we don't ultimately um, enjoy ourselves doing that or being there, then we shift. We take a different route. So there are other options as well. So um, the other thing about not getting there is um, sometimes there's a block that happens. Um, not all the time, it's, it's not all the time avoidance, but it can be um, a, just a, a block, simply, simply a block. So uh, for example, I have a client that I was recently working with who wants to create art and wants to explore the idea of sharing her art with others and be able to make a living on her art. And, um, and it's so, you know, so many artists have this idea that they that they can do that and they want it to be um, an expression of themselves and for others to appreciate their art. And so we worked through this um, 
this shuffle of emotions that were coming up around wanting to share art and wanting it to be, um, uh, what's the word? Wanting it to be appreciated and accepted and, and to be purchased, obviously. And um, it, it came up that there was, there is just so much around um, art being accepted by others because it's an exposure of the self, right? And um, in doing that, it's overcoming those, those roadblocks and those fears around being that person that shows up and exposes the self to others and is accepted and not taking that if people don't buy that it's not a not a representation of their 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 self acceptance because ultimately it's it's her responsibility to accept herself not for others to accept her by buying her art does that make sense yeah, so there can be blocks that come up and there's ways to work through that. Um, this is something that I do in my sessions one-on-one. -on -one, and if you want to explore that more, I'm um, happy to get on a discovery call with you and we can talk more about what that would look like to work with me one-on-one -on -one and explore more of the um, blocks that might be coming up for you. Okay. So my recommendation my um, challenge to you is to pick something that you've been wanting to do. Pick a goal, pick something that uh, is having to do with um, life in any capacity. Maybe it's personal, family, work, relationship, um, anything, and go for it, okay? <laughs> um, and it doesn't have to mean that you go run a marathon tomorrow. It means that if you want to run a marathon, you start setting a habit. You make a habit to go walk five minutes every day for 30 minutes, for, for 30 days. So in that 30 days, you do something every day that leads to making that habit. And in that time, you've shown up for yourself 30 times. And so every day when you complete the task that you put out for yourself to say, I'm going to go walk for five minutes every day, afterwards you celebrate. You celebrate each time that you do that and you say congratulations and you say thank you and you give yourself a big hug and a round of applause. Okay. Um, and if it's a different kind of goal, I know I'm using the running marathon goal, but if it's something else, like you want to write a book, you want to meditate more, you want to um, show up at, at home more often, you want to um, decrease your hours at work, you want to increase your knowledge to become in, to be in a different place at work, do something every day that you feel is going to get you to that end goal and celebrate every day that you've done something towards that. It's not about just looking at the far off future of what is supposed to be. It's about celebrating and showing gratitude every day that you've shown up for yourself to work towards that. Okay. So with that gratitude, we release self-blame. We release the self-pity or martyrdom that can come up from not showing up for ourselves. So every day that you show up for yourself, and you have worked towards that goal, that ultimate thing that you want to achieve, and then you say, yay, I did it, hooray. You release the need for someone else to approve of you, and you release the martyrdom that comes with it, can come with it. You release the self-pity, and you start to take charge. You take charge, you take responsibility for your behaviors, for your actions, and you move towards this towards operating in this way that um, is really best for you right now. That's the ultimate goal, is just work towards what ultimately works for you, okay? Have I hit a nerve yet? All good? Yeah. It's all good because 
it's things we are learning. We're learning about ourselves and this is the process. This is our human experience. We get to learn more about ourselves. Okay. So the other thing about gratitude that I wanted to read to you, this is from the book Ask and It Is Given by Abraham Hicks. So once you have made a decision that nothing is more important than that you feel good and you have decided that you are going to consciously look for some things to appreciate today, the object of your attention has now become the feeling, the feeling of appreciation. You have now established a circuit between you and that object. Perhaps it's that you've shown up for yourself and you've, you've re related that um, connection and, and that appreciation so that the law of attraction will begin working on, on that immediately. And so you will start to see more of the things that you appreciate right away. Yeah. So the more you appreciate yourself, the more you are showing up for, the more that you're showing up for yourself, the more that you're appreciating that you're showing up for yourself, the more that that aligns and that connects and you begin to do it more often. So celebrate yourself and release the self-blame and the self-pity and the martyrdom and enjoy your life. Okay. Yeah. My um, ultimate challenge for you to post on social media and tag me has to do with uh, showing up for yourself in an area of your life that you've been wanting to show up, but you've been feeling stuck. And if you're stuck, it's okay. It just means that maybe you're holding on to something that no longer serves you. So it's sort of like old patterns that we've discussed. And um, sometimes we repeat those old patterns, kind of like the, blo the blocks and the avoidance that come up. So um, I challenge you to post a picture of uh, you doing an activity or um, reading a book or doing something that works towards this goal that you want. Um, even if it's like uh, going for a walk once a day for five minutes, post a picture of you walking or post a picture of the outside that you see when you're walking. And then tag me at Reflective Healing on Facebook and or Instagram or both. <laughs> And then hashtag I show up for myself. And I'll put that in the comments so you can see it. And I wish you all a uh, happy holidays and a very good day. Um, and then again, if you would like to explore this further and um, maybe uh, first we'll start with a discovery call. We can schedule the discovery call. But what I, I feel very strongly about with this work is that it helps to have someone hold space and I do that in my work. So let me know if you would like to set up a discovery call. You can um, click a link in my website that I'll post up here so you can have it. All right. Thank you so much. I'll be back next Friday for the final week six of six Facebook and Instagram lives for self-awareness strategies. Okay. Aloha.